I had advice before doing this from a very, very fabulous music journalist. He suggested that it might be interesting to ask you what your state of mind is usually when you're composing. I find it, after all that spiel, I find it incredibly hard to concentrate when I'm composing. I work in, in very short bursts. Um, and rare moments where, where something will just seem to come out of nowhere, which of course it hasn't, um, and, and everything works out are wonderful. But I spend a lot of time uh, wanting to get up from the piano and go and check my email, it's, which is ridiculous because <laughs> I love what I do, but there's, um, and I feel, I feel very, I don't know, sometimes, sometimes I feel very impatient. I've started this talus piece and I just want to have it finished with. Um, but then, but the, I don't know, it's very strange. I think it's a, it's perhaps a, I think there is a constant state of feeling one should be doing better. So if it's coming too easily, you think, oh my goodness, I'm not being intellectual enough, and, and then vice versa. Um, but actually, having said all that, I try and retain a fairly, um, pragmatic state of mind, I guess, in a way. Um, because I really, I really do think about what it's like to perform that piece, and it's really important to me. Um, so there are so many practical considerations. At the moment, the vocal piece I'm writing got big chords in it, so the people at the top and the bottom are singing at one of the extremes of their ranges, and it's, it's really important for those people that they're not at that extreme of their ranges all the time, so, so they, have to, they have to have a rest and, and sing a bit lower or a bit higher. Um, so, so, so I'm really kind of consciously thinking about those things as I'm composing, and, um, um, and I really enjoy the practicalities of of, of composing. Um, and it's not all like that, I, because sometimes it just does seem that um, ideas have come out of nowhere. And actually, I feel more emotional when I'm writing the music. Then when I hear it, by the time I hear it, however wonderful the performance, I'm always slightly bored of it. But um, if I write, if I'm writing some kind of big emotional climax in my piece, it is almost um, kind of emotionally overwhelming in itself at that moment that you're writing it. Um, uh, so that's 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 really fantastic, and th th those bits do come. Those 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 times feelings do do come, but. I think probably four out of the five hours of the day you're, you're thinking about going to make a cup of tea, um, which, is, which, is, which is ridiculous. Yeah, I can remember you tweeting the other day something about how you'd spent the entire day working and then finally at the end of the afternoon in 45 seconds had written the seven perfect notes. Yes. <laughs> And I think so. I think it's all necessary because I used to beat myself up a lot about it. Oh, I'm wasting too much time, or I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing other things. Um, but I, but I, th I think there's a reason why that sometimes happens. You know, um, you know, like kind of going to sleep on a problem. You often wake up with a solution. And I think, I, I think, I think it's the same with composing. And I, I, at the end of the day, I often deliberately leave it before I get to the end of a section, even if I'm able to, because, because I think that would be something to go back to and I might, I might see it in a different light the next day. I've written, I've written the beginning of this piece that I'm writing at the moment very quickly, but I want, to, I want to give it a bit of space and then go back and look at it and see if that's still what I think is the good beginning. Um, yes. I find it. I find it very hard to concentrate. Very hard. Um, I'm the kind of person who has to have complete silence to understand a book, and and I I find it very hard to concentrate on composing. Um, but but it's worth it. But I wish I could say that I went into these deep trance-like states for four hours at a time. And, you know, had a kind of a ridiculous level of concentration but I don't I struggle with it continuously and every time I finish a piece I think how the hell did I manage that because I seem to you know yeah but I, yeah 
certainly doesn't come out in the music. No, and maybe, you know, every time I say this, I think, oh, God, I'm probably... Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What was, for me, what was really interesting, um, when we did the Kickstarter to try and raise money for the Bach Project, um, that you were so instrumental in making successful through all of your social media um, (laughs) efforts. But one of the prizes that we gave away for people who gave us 25 quid or something um, was pages of your manuscript for your piece. And... That, that for me is an answer. I always find it intriguing looking at composers' manuscripts to see, because you get an idea about how they work somehow. Yeah. And it, that was really interesting seeing um, just what was happening on, on the manuscript paper, that yeah. it wasn't just sort of notes and then a few scribbled out and then a few more notes, that there were actual, you were writing words in. Yeah. Um, to remind yourself of, of ideas that you'd had that, about the way you wanted to treat an, an idea. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm doing that more and more, actually. Um, yes, because I, 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 you know, I, I, I'll come up with a good idea and then I will forget it. Um, so, so, so I do write a lot of words, and I write a lot of words when I start about how I, how I want the shape of the piece to be, how I want the... the how I want the music to sound, just really, really, um, I, I, I do, I, 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 write, I write a great deal, um, and I find, I find using manuscripts still is, you know, without doubt, I can't, I find a computer, there's a barrier there, and I'm not, I think for some people, particularly, you know, who are younger, there may not be that barrier there. I mean, having said that, so for instance, I mean, I'm writing this piece about Talis at the moment, and I'm almost a bit freaked out about how easily it's kind of writing itself in a way. But I have spent, I would say, a month reading. I've I've read a pile of books, you know, eight eight high on Talis. I've I've read, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to hours and hours and hours of Talis, and then I. So I've kind of imbibed it all to such a degree that I think my brain started working on it before I actually started composing. Um, and I do, I do have those moments where some, sometimes everything just seems to fit. And that's, um, and I, and I, and, I, and th- those are the most wonderful moments ever. Um, yes, I mean, I think it's just getting old as well. Um, yeah, because you're ancient. Be more, I used to be more traumatized. I used to find, I used to find composing incredibly traumatic, and you know, um, very stressful. And uh, I'd stay up late into the night and exhaust myself and make myself ill. And then I'm just of an age where I feel that's rather unnecessary these days. <laughs> Um, and I've had, I've, it's been proved enough times. So every time I start a piece, I think I'm not going to finish this. It's impossible. It's going to be a disaster. And then every time, bar once or twice, long in the past, I have finished the piece. So I've had it empir- empirically, empirically, proved to myself that it just always works out. So this is my new attitude to life, <laughs> which I highly recommend. <laughs>